morning all and welcome back to WTF for another project. Uh, for this project we're going to go for a walk because it happens to be in our back field. Just to give you a bit of background to all this, this field of ours which we've had since owning the property. Uh, unfortunately We've never been able to do much with because it's always been really overgrown with brambles and uh, recently my son John decided he would go a bit mad with a machete and he's cleared all the brambles so what we've done is cleared it all up and we've now put up four square for 80 meters which I'm going to show you anyway let's get over this gate ah, oops there we go there's the shack down there follow me and we'll go down into this uh, field so this field was um, totally impassable totally overgrown it's also very swampy. There's lots of, uh, a lot of the runoff water from the hills comes through here. And years ago, I did actually put some drainage ditches, which have, have actually helped. But I've always, we haven't really been able to do much with this up until recently. And we can now actually get into this field. And I've decided I would clear it, or clear part of it, keep some of it wild and use it to make a four square and why why wouldn't you and here we go here's the field and here's a four square so all that area in front of you there all that grass area was just brambles which are bulldozed with the digger and we've put grass seed there and it's all come up quite nicely because of the rain and it's been quite warm and uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep this mowed and it'll be a nicer uh, bit of um, grass which should help to help with the maintenance of the four square anyway let's go and um let's go and have a look at the four square it's very similar to the one i built for 40 meters but double the size obviously but there are one or two things that i've done differently with this which I'm going to show you improvements I would say um, but anyway let's um so this is the uh, the center of it and we've got our hybrid coupler which is in here this is actually very similar to what we've had before with the 40 meter one uh, so if you want to see the details it's exactly the same but obviously designed for a different frequency there's two toroids and there's a load of relays and that um, map sort of gives us an idea of which antenna does what so you can see the direction that we're facing um, <clears throat> north is actually off that direction so theoretically here we'll be beaming to the northeast the southwest northwest southeast we've got our 75 ohm feeder lines here which are the transformation lines which match the output of the hybrid coupler to the uh, verticals obviously there's a bit of an impedance mismatch so this these 75 ohm lines do that and they're um, high velocity factor which is what you need this is our coax coming in from the shack which is RG213. We've got a bit of a choke ballon there. And that uh, coax is about 100 meters long, which is the distance back to the shack. And I've also put some uh, bit of gravel there and uh, paving edging just to make it look reasonably good. So, what we'll do, take a little bit of a a hike around here just to show you a few things one of the things I've also done here is put some uh, 
old stock fence, which I think improves the grounding. I think, well, possibly, it seems a sensible idea. I know I had some excess fencing, so I thought it would probably be a good idea. So in this, uh, corner over here we've got the uh, westerly end of the field nice little mountain stream there which goes all the way around the field this field this stream was a little bit of a challenge to negotiate because we had to lay for some of the verticals we had to lay the radials across that stream um, <clears throat> and it's all stony so you can't really peg it so I've had to sort of put big stones to hold the wires down which I think more or less worked all the vertical all the radials here are more or less quarter of a wavelength except for the ones that meet in the middle and join onto a copper uh, bus bar where it's more of a copper thick copper wire than an actual uh, copper strip uh, what we'll do is um, we'll show you uh, one of the verticals uh, they're all the same once you see one you've seen them all so this is our vertical one of the verticals and you can see it's going all the way up 60 foot high spider beam poles four of them fiberglass <clears throat> these are really good actually and I use them on the 40 meter four square and they've lasted and they haven't had any problems with them very low maintenance and uh, really really um, do very well at the bottom here we've got a <clears throat> a coil and a relay so this basically allows me to vary the resonant frequency of the um, vertical the thing is with 80 meters is obviously it's a big band it's uh, it's quite wide and uh, if you've got aluminium uh, masts as your verticals then you don't need to worry about this but if you're using wire as your elements then you will need to um, bring in more inductance if you want to cover the CW end of the band and uh, that's what that does so uh, the, the actual verticals are tuned for about the middle of the band uh, or just a bit higher around about 3.7 megahertz so uh, that coil allows me to work on the CW end of the band the only thing I did differently as well compared to the 40 meter four square is got these um, stainless steel radial plates from DX engineering and uh, they're really good actually for, the, for what they're about $80 which is uh, not bad actually and uh, you can use aluminium but it tends to corrode this will last forever it's all pre-drilled which is nice you don't have to drill it or anything like that and then just and it comes with some stainless steel nuts and bolts uh, which um, also helps and so it's, it, this this radial plate will last uh, last forever we've got an earth earthing stake there which is really more for lightning than anything else um, but it also helps, you know, helps with the grounding. Got about 42 to 45 radials per vertical. And uh, just use normal PVC wire or coated wire. It's about 18 SWG thereabouts. And uh, I didn't use that D10 stuff. The D10 is... Um, it was a bit of a nightmare in terms of untwisting it and plus the fact that I haven't got any of it left so I just went for normal uh, wire the cheapest I could find I've got about two and a half kilometers of wire for the radials and over or, or just under 3,000 ground staples which keep the radials in place and I started work on this probably about four weeks ago and you can see already how the grass is grown and it's starting to overgrow the radials and this um, bit of stock fence so I think the ground system here is pretty good the um, 
impedance of the um, of the verticals is about 30 ohms or thereabouts which usually reflects it's got quite a good ground system so what else can I show you just show you this part of the stream which which is next to the uh, western end of the field So this is this stream which goes all the way round and this was a bit of a challenge as I mentioned trying to get radials buried through uh, threaded through all these uh, bushes and everything it was a bit of hard work got totally cut to shreds by all the brambles but uh, I think it's going to be worth it I think this uh, antenna system is, is quite good anyway what we'll do is we'll uh, head back and give you a demonstration of how it all works. Well here we are back in the shack and um, I'll just show you the control box for this um, four square which I've got here and uh, it's just like a little power supply in there, 24 volt power supply and we can switch the directions uh, with the switch I've also got another switch there which is operates the relays for the um, coils to switch the resonant frequency when you want to use it on CW. So what I'm going to do is sort of demonstrate the directivity of this um, four square. I've got it tuned up on 80 meters um, and we'll just listen to a couple of stations and I'll and you can and I'll switch between the um, different directions and you'll see the uh, the different um, uh, amounts of gain in the different directions so we've got a couple of stations here one of them is Jeff GW3UZS and there's another station um, <clears throat> who's in England who I don't uh, I don't know where, where exactly in England he is but he's obviously to the east of us so as you can see at the moment we've got the four square pointing in a southeasterly direction and he's sort of peaking at about uh, well just over the nine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the four square to the, to the northwesterly direction so it's going to be sort of more or less totally opposite direction to him and if you watch the S meter he's not really going above S6 to S7. So I'll put it back again. So that's the north, that's southeast, northeast. And we'll, we'll put it back to northwest again. And what I will do now is I'll swap over to the dipole and see the difference between the four square and the dipole. Now we're on the dipole. You see, he's really strong on the dipole because he's located in Cardiff, which is kind of like what you'd expect. So I'll put it back on the four square again. This is a German station calling. That's on the four square. Now if I turn it to the dipole, just noise. It's very, very faint. That's for the dipole up at 60 foot. I'll turn it back to the four square again. You can hear him quite clearly. It's 20 past five. And I can hear that German station quite clearly on the four square, but you just can't hear him on the dipole. So that's quite a good example of 
the gain on this uh, antenna. So I hope that gives you a, a bit of a demonstration of uh, how the four square works um, on receive. Um, one of the things you have to realise is that on 80 metres, obviously, um, propagation is a lot different than what it is on, say, 40. And certainly for inter G, um, in other words, in, in getting QSOs in between the stations in the UK, uh, something like a dipole is, is probably a lot better than a four square. A dipole uh, on 80 metres tends to radiate um, pretty well straight up and uh, which is what you need uh, for you know propagation on on, on uh, 80 meters for sort of into uk work the four square has a very low angle of uh, radiation because obviously it's a vertical so it's great for dx um, but it's not um not quite as good for into g what i have noticed with the four square um <clears throat> is that um below about 200 300 miles it it uh, it, it, it the dipole tends to um outperform it um, <clears throat> but if it's um, stations you know greater than that then then it uh, then it's quite good uh, and obviously for DX work it's it's you know that's that's what it's designed for but it does have the advantages you know it does have directivity which uh, which I've hopefully demonstrated there um, <clears throat> but um, at this time of day it's more it's morning and uh, you know the propagation is the skip is is very limited so it's really difficult to give you a really good demonstration of the the four square but i think i've sort of showed the difference in um in strength that you can get by switching in different directions um is it worth putting up a four square for 80 meters uh, it's a lot of work um and i think if you if you've got the space and if you wanted to you know as an alternative um, aerial system for long distance work then I think it's I think it's probably worth the effort um, but on the other hand you know you can do quite a lot with a dipole if you can get up high enough uh, so there's a lot to be said for you know just a simple dipole and certainly for into G into UK that works uh, really well so um, overall I think it was probably worth the effort although it was <laughs> it was a bit of a slog Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, video and uh, we'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching.